Ultra Podcast. This is the debut for the Austrian GP where George Russell, guys, George Russell has taken first place after peeping Lando Norris and Max Verstappen after their collision. And he said it, he said it, he said, I'm just going to sit in there. This is before the race, uh, the day before the race. I'm just going to sit in there, see what happens, bide my time. And if it falls my way, it falls my way. So we need to give a big shout out to George Russell for hanging in there. And this is his second win in F1, I believe. A Mercedes podium. A Mercedes podium. And Mercedes actually win a race. I remember the last time they won a race. But yeah. So yeah, welcome guys. This is the GT Podcast. Um, my name is Dex from Box to Box. And if you know us. If you don't know us, now you know us. If you know us, if you... I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is... Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Ah, right, let's get straight into it. I'm just going to go... I know our format is we go through the race as a whole and see what happened. But yesterday was a bit of a weird day. Um, I lost a friend and I was just down. So I, I was watching the race but not really taking notes. So it was like just a weird time. So I'm trying... I'm going to try and stay upbeat for you guys. Um... And also, just before I start, uh, this friend in particular, like, I saw them on Friday on someone's post. Like, I've made a conscious effort this year to be like, yo, I'm going to be reaching out to people. Like, I see them on social media, I reach out to them. Because we have this thing, there's this mental construct that we have, that if we see them, it's like we spend time with them, but we really didn't spend time with them. Mm -hmm. Then they pass away, and now I'm really regretting not having reached out. So, guys, reach out. It's not that we were, we were speaking terms, we were good, but life happens man so guys if there's anyone you want to reach out to please do it now don't waste time you need to give people their flowers while they're still here and yeah that is a big shout out to my homie um yeah getting straight into this gravel trap podcast the person i really want to get into um i'm going to have a more chilled tone today i'm going to talk from a fan's perspective and i am going to see if um, I make sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, before we continue, we are doing F1 at the junction next week. Well, no, this weekend. Silverstone GP, we will be live, live from the junction. So all of you are welcome. And we'll also be doing a trivia. So get your Silverstone trivia up there so that you're ready. Um, all right, so where do we start? I'm not going to start with Max and Land. We're going to build up to that slowly. Let me just start with how this entire weekend was so perfect for Red Bull, right? Red Bull had everything covered. Like Red Bull, this was supposed to be their race, right? Let From uh, qualifying, SQ, 1, 2, and 3. It's really dope they're now calling it SQ. Like these guys will brand anything and everything. But it's good because like you're not supposed to get it twisted. Like it's us. It's us F1, right? Um, so yeah, this guy was pulled in, in sprint qualifying. I'm going to try and stop touching the mic. It's such a habit, such a bad habit that I have. So when you hear like, I sound like this, just not have touched the mic. Um, I'm, I'm fumbling the bag. I'm fumbling the bag like uh, the Ferrari team engineers. So anyway, um, yeah. Uh, Max has just been solid, like, the entire weekend. Like, he finished uh, on pole in qualifying uh, for the sprint. Then for the sprint, really just in a different level. Like, no one could catch him up. Um, and then the, 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 the part that really, really blew me away with this, um, with Max's performance this weekend was the qualifying for the race. Because if you guys watch the qualifying, he set a time that no one could beat, right? He was like four tenths of a second faster than anyone, which was, it's such a big gap in F1. And then he goes on and extends it by another tenth of a second. And you're like, dude, where are you getting all this space? And no one, no one could come close. No one could come close. But this is the beauty of F1. Um, what you do in qualifying sometimes just didn't replicate in a race. But also that's where I really commend the consistency of this F of the of uh, Red Bull because some people really set up for sprint, some people really set up for qualifying, and then there's so now there's sprint qualifying, then there's sprint, then there's qualifying, then there's the race. At least now you are allowed to uh, change strategies and change things after the sprint, between sprint and the actual qualifying for the race. Previously, it was one setup going through the entire weekend and everyone complained. No one was for that because it just puts the team at a very big disadvantage because the conditions changed so much, right? On a normal weekend, you're switching from 
uh, racing in one lap, like one, two, three laps coming into the pit, that's the qualifying bit. Then you do the race, which is 40 whatever laps or 50 something laps. Like in this case, it was 71 laps. So now in previous years, in, in qualifying, in sprints, you had qualifying for the sprint and then you had qualifying for the race and then you had the sprint. So like you're tuning the car for so, you have to have one, you have to tune the car one way. When Park Ferme hits, it has to be able to cover all these different types of races, qualifying, sprint, and the race under one set of um, strategies and settings and all that stuff. So yeah, all the teams complained. And I guess this works much better. But still, for you to be consistent across the board, because I think Park Ferme happens after sprint qualifying one. So you have sprint qualifying, then whatever you do in sprint qualifying, that goes all through sprint. And then now you can change again. Then now you can change to to qualifying modes and then pack for me again and then now to um what's it called to the race so for you to stay consistent across the board i commend red bull like that that takes a lot of of just your car has to be amazing and you have to have amazing engineers but not only red bull i have to say mclaren because mclaren are up there like the fact that these guys and it was it was it, it started last year. If you guys remember last year when they went to they went and got those changes, um, I'm trying to get the results of the sprint. Um, I don't want to mess it up. Piastri was second and Norris was third again. Red uh, um, McLaren, McLaren, McLaren after Red Bull. So um, yeah, they got the upgrades last year, and then all of a sudden this car became a beast. And you're like, what just happened? So everyone, I'm sure all Mercedes fans are just like, why can that be us? Because <laughs> all Mercedes fans want that to be, it, it, they want that to be them. But uh, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was a really the, the weekend was setting up to be beautiful throughout the race. All right, um, I think it'll just be very unprofessional of me to not talk about Leclerc. This weekend has been one of the worst for Leclerc. Like Leclerc has gone through it this weekend. Leclerc has had issues after issues after issues. Um, in qualifying, the car just looks weird. In the sprint, he finished... I don't even know what he finished. He's not in the top five. That much I can tell you. He finished seventh. Then he goes on to... Um, what's this? They go into qualifying for the race. In Q3... With like one minute and something seconds left in the race, uh, left to go out to Q3 because what you want to do is if a lap is one minute, it takes you one minute like 30 or 40 to do the lap, you you want to come out of the pits around two minutes, right? So that you do your one lap, um, it's like your out lap, then by the time it's like 10 seconds to go, you now go for your proper lap. So he comes out perfectly on time, like he's good. There's a bit of traffic on the pit exit, but it's fine. He gets to the end of pit exit, his car stalls. And literally, the car comes back on. When it comes back on, there is not enough time for him to actually do his lap. And I was just like, dude, how, like, how, how can everything go so bad for you, right? Then he goes on to the race, and he is even more unlucky because he crashes in the first lap with Piastri, who I don't even know how Piastri manages to finish his uh, race without any damage and actually finished in P2. Um... Yeah, he has damage in the first lap. He has to go and pit. He has to go and change his front wing. Uh, the one thing about the front wing is, so normally a pit stop will take uh, two points, whatever seconds, right? Whatever it is. But when the jack is put in, it's put in, in the front end. But for you to change the front end, you can't jack it up and then remove it, right? The car will just fall down. So you have to jack it a different way. So already you lost time. You are definitely going to lose time changing your front end. With, within a few laps, he comes back in, changes the tires again. This guy had done three pit stops by the time people were trying to do their first one. And with, I, I remember I wrote this down somewhere. I have two sets of notes. I wrote some things down from the race yesterday. I didn't write too much, but I wrote some things. I remember he was told by the team, we are still in the points. I'm like, dude, you're 18th or 17th. Where are you in the points? Where are the engineers seeing points in this race? Um, then when the crash happened, I was like, oh, oh, snap. Maybe maybe he was right. Maybe he was right. Or maybe they predicted there was going to be a, a something, right? Because if something happens, a collision can only happen between two cars. So if you predict it and you say these two cars are going to drop or they're going to pit because of a damage or something. But then, oh, yeah, because you're 17th. Yeah, whichever two they are, they're definitely above you. <laughs> so you're going to be in the points. But um, 
yeah, that didn't happen, obviously. Uh, um, he actually finished 11th. Wow, he was just one place off the points, to be honest. Six points. So shout out to him. He tried. But yeah, he's, he's, he was outside the points. Um, yeah, man, Leclerc is just having one of those like periods. It's like, it's really testing his mental fortitude. Like, can you <laughs> uh, withstand everything that's coming at you and still perform at the highest level? Being an F1 driver is insanely difficult. Like, these are things I don't know. I don't think many common people would live with. Um, uh, 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 who are we going to next? Uh, Checo Perez? Checo, Checo, Checo. Um, I don't know. Ever since you signed that contract, it's like, I don't even understand what's happening. At the moment, I had written this somewhere as well. At the moment, if uh, Lando... Piastri is only six points away from Checo. So if Lando... Um, no, no, sorry. Piastri is six points away. So if Checo keeps on going like this, he can easily drop to like sixth. Um, if uh, George won the race, so he might even drop to seventh. Um, so it, he would need, if he finishes anything from ninth, George and Oscar would make it to fifth and sixth. Um, and in his current form, this dude might actually end up in like eighth place. But the thing with Checo is, he, will, he normally has a stint of like three, four races where he puts things together. And it's normally just before a contract negotiation. But he's already signed his two-year contract. So he's here for the, for the for the remaining, for another two years. So it's harder to, I don't know. This happens a lot in the NBA. When you know it's going to be a contract year, bro, you ball. You do everything in your power to ball. So that once the season ends, you're being offered something in the region of like 15, 20 million per year. Which is now becoming nothing. Because uh, the TV deal in the NBA is going up. So the average salary is going to go up to like... Well, yeah, it might go up to like 15, 20, but people are getting paid. Like yesterday, um, OG and Unobi um, got, I think, on average 40 million a year for five-year deal. So that's like 200 and something. Um, but yeah, basically, my point is people ball like insane on, in their contract years. Once you get the contract, now you can relax a bit. And then especially if you're like in your late 30s and stuff like that. I'm not saying this is what Checo is doing. But he's he's looking like someone who's acting like that. I've already gotten my deal, like, you know, uh, I'm cool. Let's do it. Um, so, yeah, Chico has been extremely, extremely weird. I want to also point out there was a big race at the end. Guys, if you don't know, I am a Haas fan. We finished in sixth and eighth. Uh, we sandwiched a uh, Red Bull. And this was completely earned. Now, moving on from Chico, as a Chico fan, to a Checo rival, um, what Nico Hulkenberg did to Nico Hulkenberg did to Checo in the last in the last lap was actually madness. Like that was a race in itself. If you look at how Checo came at him, like you just see a last lap, guys. And then at this point, Nico is in front of Checo. Then Nico, um, oh, sorry, Checo is coming at him, coming at him, and it's like the first uh, turn two, turn three. Then I think it was turn four or five. He manages to overtake him. After Halkenberg did well to defend in the far, in the pre, in the previous two corners, then after passing him, he doesn't even go far. Now this is the thing about this Austrian circuit that was really fascinating, and I also need to give a big shout out to Naomi Schiff. Naomi Schiff on Sky, like um, she explained. So I was watching her after I think it was sprint qualifying, um, or the sprint. I can't remember which one it was. But the way in which she was breaking down the track. So there's something she said about how, um, obviously, there's three DRS zones. But the one thing about Austria, there's the one DRS zone that or maybe you guys knew. I didn't know. There's, there's the one DRS zone. And if you overtake too early, you give the person you've overtaken a chance to overtake you back. Because after like two or three corners, you're already in another DRS zone that's on a straight. So... Like, you need to really time your overtake such that, such that you overtake, and by the time you're getting the next DRS zone, you, like, that person is not, like, you, you have to do it well, basically. That's what you're trying to say. Like, you, by the time the DRS is activated for them, they are, you're probably in a corner, and the corner helps you defend better. You know, that's basically what she's trying to say in a nutshell. And she explains F1 so well. Like, I think the, pers the perspective of a driver is so dope. Like, um, and then, of course, there's the fact that She's a woman and she's a black woman in a sport that's male-dominated by white males. 
um she always feels like um okay not her but not just her but generally women across the board when they come to a male dominated sport they feel like they need to go above and beyond to explain or to be better at their job right um and in her case i feel like she's just naturally someone who communicates well so it comes off as she's not only very well versed with what's happening she's a former driver so she has the experience but she is also quite um she communicates it well like she's just a good communicator um and and that's the thing cuz and then there was also this part where it was her it was bunny there was three ladies who were interviewing um signs and interviewed i can't remember who else they interviewed i can't remember who else they interviewed but the drivers were coming into that with such uh this was before the race though they were, they were like they were so uptight right and they just managed to calm them down so for example um they were telling signs how um everyone says that you're so mad you're so angry like what's the problem and signs is like yeah I'm, i'm not mad i'm just like it's just that you guys see me that i have a resting mm face he actually says that i have a resting mm face um that and then i have to work on my contract stuff during the week so like monday to thursday i'm with my agent working on my contract stuff and then by the time friday comes um now this is where he blew me away as well a spaniard giving you and a, a very english phrase there's potential for me to look what did he say um no there's a chance that i would potentially look uh, i uh, there's potential that i may look a bit less rested or something like that and i was like how did you like i mean like it makes sense he he's not blaming it on the fact that he has to do contractual stuff and he has to get ready for a race and stuff he's just saying that there may be there may be a chance <laughs> that i may look potentially that i may look less rested then naomi is like um but you have a resting um face and signs just started laughing right and just disarming them this in this case it's just on naomi shift it was bunny as well and the other lady i forget her name from sky they did such a good job the the women in f1 who actually in the media they do such a good job in terms of just like they 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 are knowledgeable but they're human they understand the moment especially this being such a high stakes uh sport where emotions are running high and then someone just sticks a camera camera a microphone in your face what did you think about the race it was only that one lady who was trying to start things up the one who interviewed um i don't know if it's one of them the one who interviewed both max and lando trying to get them to say something so he interviewed or she interviewed max and then um max said uh no lando first and then lando said uh are you guys are friends or whatever whatever i still going to talk to him then lando is like if he says if he accepts if he apologizes and accepts yeah that, why not and then this lady goes to max and she's like um uh, lando said that uh if you're not if you don't like she really twisted it but basically what she did is she made it see, seem that if if max doesn't show enough respect to what he did or something like that because she she used the she used lack of respect in there i don't want to quote her because i can't remember but anyway she twisted it and i was just like yo like the media can be rough and you, you your tempers are high fans are there you're trying to look calm for the fans your team is just mad at you you had the chance to it's a home race you would have like ugh, being a member of the media is just difficult anyway this all started because i digressed naomi shift and the drs zone um and who was i talking about i was talking about has i was talking about nico halkenberg and sergio so yeah sergio literally literally just pulls a quick move on him and because they're leading up to that point where drs activates almost immediately for the person who's been overtaken nico comes back and this, mind you this is the last lap of the race like has is going head to head with a red bull I'm telling you I was so happy. I have never been so happy in my life. I was just like wow. Wow wow wow. Look at Nico Hulkenberg go. Look at that boy go. You know. And Kmag also shout out to Kmag who finished ninth. Um so I think that was 12 points for Haas and just like that by round 11 out of 24 we've already gotten more points that we than we did the entirety of last season that already is an achievement like we need to give a big shout out to our japanese team principal the big man there's a there's a there's an interview that he actually did and i'm trying to find it 
um oh here it is um i'm just so happy for everyone in the team sometimes we get unlucky but today our execution was amazing nico and kevin drove well and pit stops were good everything was great i'm speechless i'm just so happy for everyone to get this result and for nico to beat perez on merit that is ayokumatsu our team principal and yeah man he's done a big job like ever since uh, good good uh, good 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 what's his name gutna good i'm always i'm always butchering his name steiner let me just call him steiner <laughs> um ever since he left the team like um gunta gunta steiner so ever since he left the team like and it was such a shock because it was like a few days before the race before f1 start before the season starts um he's actually been quite solid um Guys, we have a WhatsApp group. It's still going wild. We have a WhatsApp group where we talk about F1. Link is will be in the description um on YouTube. I think I also put it on Spotify. For those of you listening on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well, shout out to all of you. Um um yeah, so that was Hass. Hass doing so well. Um yeah, now let's get into the race. More more into the race. Um um it's taken us 21 minutes to build up to this moment. Max and Lando. What do we say about Max and Lando? Now, <laughs> the the best part about this whole thing is we Again, as I told you guys, we have a WhatsApp group. So, in this WhatsApp group, um again, link is in the description. In this WhatsApp group, it was just going off. It was going off yesterday because we have Max stands and Red Bull stands and then we have people who hate Max <laughs> and then we have McLaren fans. McLaren fans are not even as loud as Max haters. Let's just even start there. Who was on the wrong? In my opinion, I have told you guys how uh, early on in this podcast, I've told you guys how I I found, I I think what Red Bull did in the beginning of the race, um sorry, the beginning of the whole weekend and being able to stay consistent across qualifying, sprint qualifying um sprint then qualifying then the race was quite impressive to me um but but red bull cracked under pressure guys red bull cracked under pressure let's just be honest because there is no way there is no way a team that last year they had a breeze let's just like though it was just a breeze the year before let's not even go there cuz i will just annoy some people um but we might have to go there for a bit let me just go there for a bit this is this this is just uh, i did i had to do some research um and have it noted down what max has done under pressure these are four scenarios where max has been very weird under pressure brazil 21 running lewis off the track if you guys remember that um like max has max had that phase where he was just a hothead <laughs> you know then when he started winning he became this calm max chilled max and then all of a sudden when the pressure is back on he's back to being that that max and yeah so brazil 21 then we have qatar where he was ignoring the yellow flags in qualifying and then we have uh, saudi qualifying where he was rest break checking and he's always defending himself and acting like no one is on the wrong right and then the well, lights out abu dhabi It's so weird that Qatar, Saudi, Abu Dhabi, all these were in the Middle East um that he's just been acting weird, but that 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 has been Max. When Max is under pressure, he does some dumb things. Like it also is like his his lack of giving space and stuff. I guess that's what makes you a good driver. That's what all good drivers are made of. You cannot give an edge. You cannot show weakness at any point, right? But in the same breath There are some things dude like you are the champion people are looking up to you literally in the all the interviews people were saying like um let me not people it was um Andreas uh, what's his name I need to get his name right Andrea not Andreas Andreas is the McLaren um is the McLaren uh team boss I think this was the team principal if I'm not wrong Andreas Stella I think that's his name I had it here somewhere. I can't even find it. Anyway, basically what you're trying to say is that um you guys like you guys being the FIA, you've let this thing just spiral down over the years and you've not really handled it, right? So when this all comes out and and um Max does something like this and you're not punishing it, like what do you expect? And when I say things like this, I mean like the whole weaving 
it kind of seemed like he was break checking. Um, even after the contact, he refused to let Russell uh, Lando pass. He was just he was just being petty at that point. But at that point, we get it. He was never going to let the guy pass. But there is just moments where he does things, and you're just like, dude. Um, to be fair to him, though, there were moments. Lando had Lando already had gotten a five second penalty, um, and Lando was. Um, there, there was a moment, there, no, there was an overtake where he actually overtook and then actually exceeded track limits and gave the place back. But then that, I think, was his fourth, fourth infringement or something. So at that point, like, you 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 are just, you are just like, really testing the stewards. Like, there is nothing. <laughs> there is nothing that you're you're going to do to tell them, you, um, that was just a mistake. Even if it was just a mistake, it was your fourth one. I believe it was your fourth one. Um, and then, uh, 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 who else? Oh yeah, there when when Max when when Lando overtook Max or kind of overtook Max at the apex, well that's what Lando said. Let me say what that's what Lando said. Max also went off track. But then Max went off track and then came back and refused to give his place up. Then after that is when now things went off. So there was four incidences. There was the Max weaving and breaking just before the corner. There was the Lando overtake where he went wide and gave up his the place or gave it back to Max. Then there was the third one where Max is the one who went off. Uh, but he came back on, and then um, he just he just didn't let Lando through. Then now the last one was the one where they made contact, and it was that rare left puncher. So all of this could have been easily avoided. All of this could have been easily avoided if the team, if the team, the pit team did not mess up. Because again, this this all stems from that. It stems from that one pit stop. Lando did a two point nine pit, uh, two point nine pit. Max did a six point five pit, and be going into the pit, Max had like six second uh, gap. Um, six point five minus two point nine. That is uh, three point four, right? Yeah, that's a three point four gap that just disappeared like that. Sorry, three point six gap. That um, it was a six point nine to a three point six. Um, he really lost time in the pits, like. It was, it was, that was the cause of everything. And also to be fair to Lando, because I'm not to be fair to everyone. To be fair to Lando, I am standing on the fence. I'm not going to be a stand for anyone. I'm a Haas fan. And to be fair to Lando, um, I don't know how much longer Max would have held him up because he was gaining. He was gaining. If that didn't happen, and let's just say they both pitted at 2.9, right? With uh, six seconds remaining, he would have still caught him because he'd have caught him maybe with like three, two laps to go and would have had like a photo finish. Maybe Max would have won, but it would have still been have been close. And also, the flip side is, if Max just let Lando through, Lando still has a five-second penalty anyway, right? Um, <clears throat> you let Lando through. You just make sure, use DRS and make sure the remaining laps, the six remaining laps, the guy does not create a five-second lead. Literally, that was another strategy that could have just done, right? But... There is no way. Mentally, you cannot let that happen, right? You're like, I'm never going to give this guy a mental edge. Can you believe this guy going back and be like, wow, I, I, I didn't win the race. I, I, I lost it because of exceeding track limits, but we have them. We have them. Like, we, 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 can, we have proved that we can overtake them. They will use that. To, that will be his motivation. That man, Lando will stick that on a wall everywhere and, and use it as motivation. Um, the best part about this whole thing was once that whole thing happened, you just hear Toto Wolf. Like, Toto Wolf, you could tell, like, Toto Wolf was, like, chilling like this. He was just chilling. Then the thing happened, and he's like, George, you can win this race. George, you can win this race. What does, what does George say? I have to censor this part. George is like, let me drive. I'm going to drive. It. That's basically how it sounded. That's how it sounded on 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 the. That's how it sounded on the on the on the broadcast. It was so hilarious. But at that point, you just knew George was going to win it. But then George is also such a weird. First of all, let me just give a shout out to George. He won this race. But George is such an awkward winner. Like the dude, like he's acting like he's cool under pressure. Like he expected the win. I'm like, dude, you didn't expect to win. You are not even supposed to be in the on the podium. Um, oh yeah, you are. You are third. But Piastri was coming after you, right? Like, I he's such a weird winner, and he's making it like say, oh yeah, yeah, we can't wait for Silverstone next week. I get it though. I get it. You are you. You have to show a cool face. You have to show like you belong. Like this is what you do. But it's not what you do. <laughs> you need to celebrate that thing. You need to do like a leap. You remember how George, um, how Lando did that that leap. 
It's like a Lambo leap in NFL. For those of you that watch NFL, the Lambo leap where the Green Bay Packers play, they have like a high, like the outside of their stands. So this time it's called Lambo, Lambo Field. Um, but the, the stands are really high. So if you're going to celebrate to the fans, you have to jump, you have to be like run and then jump and over and go over that thing and celebrate to the fans. So if you're a big fat guy and you don't have a uh, flight, if you didn't do, um, uh, what is that thing called? Ah, what was that? What was that thing that we used to do? Uh, ah, damn! What am I forgetting? Ah, what am I forgetting? Ah, I'm forgetting it. I'm forgetting it. There's, there's this thing we used to do. Jeff knows it. Jeff, please tell me. There's this thing that we used to do that uh, that uh, we were told that oh, it will get you flight. It will get you. Um, all those things, man. I need to ask Jeff live. I'm not even. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to whatever. Let me just ask him. <laughs> How can I forget, guys? Uh, I'm such a failure. I'm such a failure in life. Eh? I'm such a failure. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, there's this thing that we used to do. It was like a training plan that we used to do when we were kids in high school, and we were told that this thing is going to increase your flight. I can't call him. Um, you're like, this thing is going to increase your flight. Like, this thing is going to... Ah, oh, man, why can't I remember? Why can't I remember? All right, let me call him real quick. And then... Yo, Jeff. I'm doing the F1 podcast live. So I wanted to ask you, what was that thing that we used to do for getting flight? For getting? Flight, flight. The one for the fitness thing. The slides. No, flight, flight, like to jump. The one you used to jump, you used to do like hops and all those things. What was it called? Uh, air alert. Air alert. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's called air alert. So if you haven't done air alert, oh my God, I've really digressed. Maka, I call someone. <laughs> yeah, if you don't do air alert, you can't leap over the crowd. That is what we wanted George to do. George, we wanted you to go and leap, do a proper leap. We wanted you to... Actually, I didn't. I didn't watch it. Maybe he did the leap. I don't know. But we wanted you to celebrate. But the point is, we wanted you to celebrate, have fun, bro. Like, yeah, he's acting like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were supposed to be here, and then Hans Zimmer. If you guys don't know Hans Zimmer, just Google him. He gets on stage, and if he's even happier, he's like the one who he's acting like the one who's won the race. Like he's getting sprayed with champagne. He's he literally he's enjoying life. I was just like, dude, George, you need to take you need to take opportunities when they come. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's Max versus Lando, man. Like, this now is going to become crazy moving on. These guys, obviously, they are friends. Uh, they've been friends for a while. But let me tell you, this is how Rosberg and Hamilton started. This is how it started. And this is how friendship just disappear and become nothingness. So, yeah, man, that's Max and Lando. Hamilton uh, Hamilton is looking much better. I'm not even going to lie. Um, Sir Lewis. Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sir Lewis is looking much better. Um, he pulled off a nice quick move on, uh, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? On Russell, like in the first two uh, first two laps of the race. But again, that same corner where you pass someone with the race and they come back at you, passed him almost immediately. Um, and that was it. <clears throat> he had a five-second penalty, I think, for I think for the release, if I'm not wrong, where he actually went with someone's, with a jack, with a, with a jack. Um, there was a lot of penalties in this race, and it was experienced drivers getting penalties. Alonso had a penalty. Um, Norris, of course, had penalties for exceeding track limits. Exceeding track limits is has really come to haunt McLaren this weekend. Um, obviously, there was a five-second penalty, which I don't know. Does he serve it in the next race? Does he serve it in Silverstone? You guys let me know in the comment section. Because um, obviously, he didn't finish the race, so he didn't serve his penalty. Max did serve his penalty. Um, then in qualifying, there was a time where it was deleted. Uh, what's his name? Piastri's time. Let's big a big shout out to Piastri because Piastri was one of the most. He was so distraught after qualifying because the guy was supposed to be in the on the podium, right? He was third. Then he was moved all the way to sixth or seventh, and he had to start from there. But oh, again, he also just drove really well. He there was I think the move of the day was uh, the move he pulled on signs to get second place after the top two fell out. Uh, or fell off the race, or yeah, whatever you wanna call it. So yeah, that I think I thought that was really, really, really dope. And um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else did he pass? 
He passed Hamilton in the 52nd lap. He also passed Checo. Like, Piastri was just putting on, pulling moves left, right, and center. <clears throat> and to be fair to him, if there was like two or three more laps, if the Max Lando thing had happened in like lap 60 as opposed to 64, this guy would have had a chance. And also, remember, there was a virtual safety car which kind of held him back for a, a lap or two with seven lap, when there were seven laps to go. So, the things, everything just fell into George's favor. Um, and to be fair to him, you have to be there to take it. You have to be there to take it. If these two decide they're going to hit each other, you have to be there to pounce. Just keep, make sure you are the third best driver. You know, like just make sure you're there because the car cannot compete. So this is your next best thing. Um, and again, Piastri. So I'd say the same with Piastri. There was a number of opportunists in this in this in this uh, race. I'd say Piastri and Signs are those people. Signs does still does not have a team. The boy is just chilling, collecting podiums. Um, it doesn't make sense to me, like he how he's just Signs is just a baller, bro. Like Signs is one of those people. Like if you watched, if you watched like a mafia movie, Signs would just be all the guys. You walk into the room, you walk into a meeting, and then there's a guy who's negotiating with you. Oh, you're gonna do this and this, and then Signs is the guy who's just chilling in the corner, just doing this. And then when he speaks, everyone listens. That's Carlos Signs right there. Signs is a beast, beast, beast. Um. Yeah, I think I've covered everyone. Alonso. Alonso has just... That was one of another... Alonso just looks like he's given up on this car. Like, the Aston Martin just doesn't look like a car that even wants to race. Like, he 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 just looks like he knows he can't compete. Like, he's, he makes some really dumb decisions. He had a 10-second penalty, and it was from doing such a... Like, a dumb thing, you know? Like, it's unlike Alonso, let me say that. So, I don't know. Maybe that is getting to him. Maybe he's just frustrated with the team. One thing I know for sure, Alonso is still one of the best drivers you'll ever see in anything, not just F1, because the man does Le Mans, has done Le Mans, the man has done NASCAR, the, like the man has done everything, and he's still competing as a 40-year-old. So I, I I will never doubt his ability as a driver. I just think maybe the, the team is just, it's, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. I don't know what it is, because Stroll is not any better. I don't even know what position he finished. What position did he finish? Um... This is Stroll. Stroll was... Stroll was... Stroll was 13th. Stroll was 13th. Mm, no, sorry. That's fastest lap. Uh, who? Oh, Alonso got fastest lap, by the way. Despite all of these things, he managed to get fastest lap. So, big shout out to Alonso on that. Uh, uh, um, Stroll was 13th. Alonso was 18th. Yeah, man. The dude just looks like... I don't know. But again, that's after the 10 second penalty. So, um, yeah. And then lastly, I just wanted to touch on Alpine. Alpine are just fighting with, with each other. Like, um, the two of them actually, there was, a, there was a point where they were going up against Alonso. And just before they passed Alonso, I think it was Gasly who was like, uh, basically said some stuff on team radio. But he was, you know, those underground things that you say that is like good. But basically, he wanted to overtake. Um, um, was it Ocon or Gasly? One of them wanted to overtake the other so that they have a good go at Alonso because um, they thought they were the faster car. And then within like 30 seconds of saying that, uh, whoever was behind Alonso, I remember it was Ocon or Gasly, pulls a quick move. I think it was Gasly. Pulls a quick move on Alonso, passes him. And then uh, within a few seconds, Ocon passes him. Um, then now they are one behind the other one behind the other the alpines so then they just decided oh we're just going to let it go let's just let's just let's just start racing and dude they almost just knocked themselves out like <laughs> it was so weird to see these alpines i'm like you guys have been so average and then all of a sudden you want to fight um also it's not a surprise ocon they've resigned gasly and ocon has been let go so we don't know where ocon is gonna go um but yeah gasly out um uh, Definitely, fin uh, he got he was tenth, so he out 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 finished him. Is out out finished, out finished him. <laughs> finished higher than him. Um, in qualifying, who out qualified the other? Let's see. Ocon out qualified Gasly, but Gasly finished ahead of him in the race. And yeah, those Alpine fights, that's interesting to see how they go about for the rest of the season. And then lastly, 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 I want to say what's up to my Aussie mate. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Um, Danny Ricardo. 
Danny Ricardo is in the points, was ninth. Yeah, this RB is, there are moments in which where the RB is just like, yo, 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 yo. It might do something. It might do something. And it's been Sunoda the whole time. In qualifying, uh, I think Sunoda has outqualified him 8-3. to three, So, Danny Ricardo is actually under real, real pressure, you know. Um, he's definitely looking for a seat next year. I don't think he has one yet. And um, he actually managed to get in the points, ninth place. Actually, a very solid race. He was just good, tidy. Um, didn't make mistakes. Um, time management was good. Like the, that was this was a good all round performance from Danny Ricardo. He needs to put together like a string of these, right? Like four or five of these, um, just back to back to back, so that he can actually assure the team, like, yo, I'm actually worth it, you know? Because right now he's driving for his future. The guy is 32, I think, or 33. As a, and as we've seen, everyone in F1 is trying to go for younger drivers. So. The average age for F1 has dropped drastically. I think he's, he'd be Sergio Perez's, I think it'd be Checo's age or some other, or age mates or around the same age. So he's driving for his future. As I said earlier, when people are driving for a contract, you will see things that you've never seen before. So, yeah, this is where the second half of the season is normally interesting. And all the, all the if you've noticed, all the contracts and whatever negotiated before July because no one wants to go into the latter six months of the season or the second half of the season when your future is not um, assured, right? So people become animals. <laughs> I think this is how awkward even won a race. Um, he won a race, right? I think he won a race. Um, but yeah, that is our debrief for Formula One, Austria GP. And I just want to give a shout out to you guys for coming through and listening to me. As I said, we have Formula One at the junction this weekend. Make sure you come through. And what else? What else? It is Silverstone. Silverstone is the big one. It's the big one. It's the home race for three drivers. George Russell, Lando Norris, and none other than Sir, Sir, and I said it again at that time, Sir, Lewis Hamilton. See you at the junction, guys, and make sure you enjoy the race. Stay safe, and if you're in Kenya, the revolution is coming. Tuesday, we are there. Peace!